Welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Dave, where today we received at Out of Spec a, a press release from Electrify America. And Kyle asked if I wouldn't go through it, summarize it for all of you, and, and really just kind of go through what is, what is it that's new over at Electrify America. So the title of this press release is Reimagining the Electric Vehicle Charging Experience. What does that mean? I mean, look, we've been hard on Electrify America recently, and rightly so, because two issues. One, reliability. How many times have you pulled up to an EA station and it just doesn't work, or you gotta switch to one station to another? It just gets super frustrating, and more frustrating than that is oftentimes you just don't realize why it's not working. The transparency from the company has been horrible. What I see here today with this press release is a step in the right direction. And so, you know, I'm gonna take you through what it is they're communicating, the direction they're going. I like what I see. Clearly there's a lot more work that needs to be done, but let's get into it and welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Dave. So while I'm sure Kyle's going to be making lots of update videos on this topic that uh, what Electrify America is doing and what's new and going on there, but after reading the press release, I can pretty much boil it down to two different things. One, they're going to be better labeling their existing units that are out there today, um, and I'll go through that. And number two, they're going to be introducing this concept of balanced units, which I'll take you through as well, which I definitely think is, is a step in the right direction. Uh, finally, what I'll do is I'll, I'll take you through a little bit of the vision that they have for the uh, charging stations of the future, which they announced earlier this year, which those pictures look wild. I mean, they really look very good. So, so look, you know, I think what Electrified America is, is doing right now is they're listening. They're listening to um, a lot of people. I can tell you it out of spec, we've made some noise. And I think, uh, like I said before, rightly so, because it's been a frustrating experience being a, an owner of a, a number of different CCS vehicles myself, but also the community at large is really kind of frustrated with this. So what I like what I see here is Electrify America acknowledging that they're tapping into the customer focused um, research they're doing, they claim, um, by reaching out to people, by listening to what their customers are saying, and, and coming up with a, a, with a better solution for the future. Now, their premise is that the, the roadways of North America, they're getting super crowded, right? Let's face it. Um, it's, it's at a rate that's going to only accelerate as, as you know, from years to come. And uh, more and more of the manufacturers are converting over from ICE vehicles to EVs. And, you know, it's not just cars, it's also trucks as well. And, and so, you know, it's really critical that Electrify America and other charging station network companies are keeping up with the demand for the electric vehicles themselves. And that's really what the mission of both Electrify America and Electrify Canada are. Um, now, Electrify America, according to their, their, their this press release, they're the largest open, or I call it public charging station, you know, open DC fast charging network in the entire United States. They're investing over $2 billion over 10 years in zero emission vehicle infrastructure, education and access. And really the goal is to, um, you can figure out about the genesis as to how they started for, for purposes of this uh, video, but the goal is to really in, take those dollars, invest those uh, millions into Americans so that they can actually um, really reap the benefits of their EVs. Uh, so Electrify America and Electrify Canada, uh, they plan to expand to about 1,800 total charging stations. I imagine that's where you pull in and then there's multiple stations with more than 10,000 chargers on two different networks, one being in the U.S., one being in Canada, in total by the year 2026. And these chargers are going to be upgraded, I'm sure you'll see over time, uh, much more comprehensive, technologically advanced, and also customer-friendly. Um, you know, it, when you look at the, the footprint of, of where the stations are today, in both in America and um, United States of America, that is, and also in Canada, you can see that in the future, uh, it, the vision state here, if you will, there's, it's a lot more dense with how many more stations that they're going to be having. So again, relying on a lot of the uh, information that they've gathered and feedback from you know, people like myself and out of spec and all of you, they've really listened to what we're saying. And they're saying that they're, they're looking to meet the needs of the EV community and uh, the, you know, through doing all this research. But the bottom line is what they're gonna be doing 
is reimagining this charger design itself. And, and I think there's two different things going on here after reading this press release. One is they've got an existing infrastructure out there today. And I, I personally know that one of the biggest challenges they have is from, you see, Electrify America has to buy charging stations from companies like ABB and uh, VTC and NIDEC and Signet. And, and, and one of the biggest problems is that when you're one company buying from multiple suppliers, and those multiple suppliers of those units are buying from parts from other suppliers, things get a little bit wacky out there. In my experience, when I pull in, I look at not just Electrify America, but I look at which kind of a charging station is it. And I can tell you that the Signets seem to do the best and the ABBs seem to do the worst. Um, maybe that's just me, but that's what I see and that's what I hear. Um, so, you know, the, 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 the idea is that for the existing infrastructure that's out there today, what they're going to be doing is providing new labeling and icons to address a lot of the power level confusion. So, you know, when someone pulls in, I remember, who was it? I, I was somewhere, I think, traveling back in my Ionic 5, and uh, this young kid pulled up in an Ionic 5 as well, and he pulled into a 150. And meanwhile, there was a 350 right there, and I said, hey... Don't, why don't you pull it into the 150? You can pull 240, maybe 235, 240. He didn't really even understand the difference. And, um, and he moved over and, and we became friends and, and, and he learned. And, but, you know, there's only so much that I can do um, either through being at stations myself or, or maybe through the platform of sharing videos with all of you. But there's a lot of people out there who drive EVs that don't watch YouTube or don't run into me at a, at a charging station. Um, so beyond all of you who charge at these stations helping others, I really, I really commend Electrify America for, for trying to beef up the communication. So what are they doing? Um, you know, in their research, they found that a lot of the users of their stations really just didn't know what they were doing. They didn't understand the difference between how much energy a, and one of their units can put out versus how much their car can actually take in or what the limits are. And, um, you know, and I guess in their research, what they found is that if they can kind of replicate maybe what, what uh, someone is used to at a gas station. So you got regular, you got premium, and you got ultra fuel or, you know, all these three different levels of fuel. Or maybe you got diesel, regular unleaded and premium fuel as, as a, maybe a better example. And it makes it simple for drivers to know what they're, what they're actually getting. And I think everyone kind of understands that. So in much the same way, what Electrify America is doing is they're introducing um, a new terminology and new signage, uh, stickers, if you will, that are going to go on to all these Electrify, the, the existing Electrify units uh, that are out there. And then all, all of the new units that are going to be brought in and introduced are going to have this new station um, signage. And the following plain language naming scheme for the options of charging capabilities that their stations offer, this is what it's going to be, okay? I'm not sure I like this, but this is what it's going to be. I think they're hoping that everyone's going to pick this up and uh, adopt this, and maybe they will. We'll see. Hyper fast for charging up to 350 kilowatts. Ultra fast for charging up to 150 kilowatts. Now, I don't know. If they had asked me in a, in a, um, in a marketing group, would I rather have it say, would the 350 be hyper or ultra, I probably would have said ultra is more than hyper, but I guess the way I'm going to think about it is the fastest charging, that's going to start with the letter H for hyper, and the slower charging is going to come later in the alphabet, and that's going to be 150, and that's going to be letter U. So hyper, 350, ultra, 150. Um, so I think that's going to be, going to be kind of cool. They're going to put these they, they claim they have different color stickers that are going to go on, and I'll, I'll show them right here. Um, and, and they're going to say hyper fast CCS up to 350 kilowatts or ultra fast, uh, you know, CCS up to 150. And, but I tell you what, I don't really see any difference in the color scheme. And they kind of both look green to me. One's got a little more yellow in it. But um, I don't know. I, I guess that's okay. One says hyper, you get, and it says 350. The other thing that they're doing is they're they're introducing this concept of um, 
uh, added connector icons or these lightning bolts that will uh, signify hyper fast charging that will actually have three lightning bolts. Ultra fast charging will have two lightning bolts. And if you, you know, if you see a, um, one of the EA stations with Chatamo, that'll just have one lightning bolt. So I guess, I don't know, is Chatamo like diesel? I don't really know if that's the right way to think about it. And then, you know, um, Ultra is like uh, regular unleaded and then Hyper is like premium uh, premium fuel. I guess that's the kind of the way to think about it. But, um, you know, what's, what, what this doesn't necessarily solve is the education that your car can only take so much energy in. So, I mean, if I'm, if I'm driving an ID4 and I don't know anything else, I'm gonna go to the hyper, right? Because that puts out 350. So I guess what I would have liked to have seen, maybe this would be a tricky thing for them to do, but in addition to labeling these units, whether it's hyper, ultra, or just two bolts or one bolt for Chatamo, I would have liked to seen a list of cars and what wh which cars are capable of charging what kilowatts. Now, that's probably a tricky thing for them to get involved with because manufacturers update the specs all the time. They come out with new software releases. So I kind of understand why that may not make sense, but I think that might be that might be a good thing. Perhaps what they could do is enhance their app so that when you go onto the app, it knows what kind of car you have, and then you could actually say, hey, am I best charging at an Ultra up to 150 or, or perhaps a, a Hyper? So, you know, I think that um, in addition to these stickers that, that are going to be on there, um, you know, this, this uh, I guess one is green, one is teal, I, I guess, um, you know, you, you can see the difference between these. The, the, they're also going to be enhancing the labeling, signifying or simplifying the payments processing uh, at the chargers. Now, these chargers do support, from what I understand, the ISO 15118 um, standard for plug and charge. Now the car has to support that, but in terms of plugging in and the charger knowing the VIN and knowing that there's a credit card attached to that VIN and being able to seamlessly charge the consumer for the energy is, is a good thing. Interesting to note that they didn't even point that out in this press release, but what they did point out was that they, the, uh, the chargers themselves are equipped with credit card readers and also um, NFC readers, which uh, those are near field communication readers, uh, contactless te technology. So you can actually, um, you know, touch your phone over to, uh, to a reader and then it will automatically know how much to charge you for. So, um, you know, the NFC labeling, uh, they've redesigned that. Uh, they, they're showing, uh, I don't know, a little hand with this, uh, with this phone and the EA logo on it. Um, you know, so it's just going to be a little bit more labeling that goes on. I, I never used either the NFC or the actual credit card reader at a EA station. I always use the app. Unfortunately, I can't use the plug and charge yet because the GV60 was delivered without it. So here in the States, but that's a different issue. Um, but so, so I think that the labeling of these stations of the NFC and the credit card reader is fine as long as they work, right? And, and again, I can't opine on whether or not they, you know, what their uptime is like, but um, they're, they're also gonna be, um, you know, when you, when you pull up to an EA station and you gotta look all the way up at the top right in order to figure out which station you're at. And sometimes in inclement weather, what happens is I'm sitting in the car because it's either snowing out or raining out and I can't quite get the angle to see if I'm at station number three or two or what have you. So they're moving the number of the station down with signage as well, which I think is gonna be a, a, a real good thing. Um, and, and, and I think that the, you know, that the, the impetus to move that charger ID from all the way in the top to a, a better spot um, I think that's, I don't really know if it's feedback again, but, but I think that's a, that's a good move for them to, to put that on there. So, um, there's also going to be a QR code sticker that you can actually, um, you can put your, your phone up to and take a picture, I guess, of that and then, and then, and then go to charging, which should be a lot easier. So, you know, long and short of this is that, um, really what they're doing is they're, they're just putting stickers on their unit to, to communicate better. Um, and I think it's a welcome change, a welcome change. So 
Um, that's the first thing that they're doing is really signage and labeling. And, and I think it looks pretty cool. I, I like it. Um, you know, that's not necessarily changing the reliability issue just by putting some stickers on the unit for sure. Um, but again, step in the right direction here. Uh, all the new units that they're going to be putting in, from what I understand, they're probably going to be replacing the ABB units first with these new units. In fact, the other day, I was over at uh, Fairfield, Connecticut, uh, charging up my Tesla, and you know, I saw these I saw these two new electric vehicle charging stations, and they had nice covers on top of them. And I was so tempted to rip the cover off to see what they were, but they kind of look like now that I meant now that I see the press release and what these new units look like because I hadn't seen them before, or if I did, I didn't really pay any attention to it. Um, I think they may be putting some of those a couple of these charging stations on. Uh, on 95 over at the Fairfield northbound entrance. Let's hope so. All right. So let's shift gears a little bit into the second big topic on this uh, on this press release, which is all about balanced charging. Now, I know for those of you who maybe understand Tesla, um, if you if you have balanced charging at a Tesla, it only happens on a V2. Now, a version two is outputting 150 kilowatts, and what they do is they force split that 150. So if you're on 1A and 1B, um, and if you're on 1A and nobody's on 1B, you'll get the full 150. But if you're on 1A and somebody else is on 1B, no matter what your car is able to pull, you're going to get 75 on one and 75 on the other. Um, and I think for that reason, maybe some people might interpret this delivering a balanced charging experience, uh, new functionality from EA as a bad thing. But I beg to differ with you on that because I think this is a good thing. I think this is a good thing overall for, for the community. And, um, and what's happening is this concept of balanced charging is they're going to have these power cabinets that are going to be in the back. And it's our understanding that there's going to be two manufacturers of these power cabinets. And those are really ultimately what's going to be delivering the power to, to two separate units. Only the new units will be doing this balanced charging and only 350s. Um, perhaps some of the units may be higher than 350, could be 360. I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm not sure how you'll be able to determine which of the, the cabinets that you see in the back is the better one if you have a choice. Um, but for the most part, you're going to be good with, it. just call it 350 split. Now, the way that this will work is no car will ever receive less than 150. So right off the bat, that's more than twice than, well, it's double than what a, at a minimum, what a V2 on a four split on Tesla would do. So it's, in my opinion, twice as good, right? It's, it's great. And, and, you know, again, I don't know if this is going to happen, but when I pull an EGMP platform into a EA station on 150, I'm pulling 170, 171 sometimes under optimal con conditions. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens when I pull into one of these balanced 350s, these new units. Um, and, you know, because a lot's going to happen and a lot's going to be taking place um, based on how much the energy the car can draw. And, and what, what EA is doing here is way more sophisticated than what Tesla is doing in the sense that they're offering dynamic load sharing, if you will, is the way I like to term, uh, to term this. And uh, each one of the cabinets that is a 350, what will happen is the, on the sticker itself, it'll say, let's say, for example, CCS, hyperfast, up to 350 kilowatts. You'll see the three lightning bolts at the bottom. And then, but you, what you'll also see is the word balanced, okay? And what that means is if you see the word balanced, then you know that, that that's going to work. Now, here's how it's going to work. Each pair of balanced chargers, they share that single power cabinet that's in the back, which is providing the power um, to the charge, to you know, to the chargers to power the vehicles. And, and what they're doing is software is reading each vehicle's current demand and, and it's relaying that information to the power cabinet in the back. And then that power cabinet is using this data and sensors and meters to manage the power allocation between each dispenser as an EV's power demand changes. And the key thing is here dynamically. So it's not heuristic. It's not like if then, if I pull in with this state of charge, then deliver this amount of power. It's dynamically updating that curve 
throughout the charging session. So an example of this that EA provided to us is, is so an EV, EV driver plugs in uh, at charger A and he's charging at 150, the maximum that the vehicle can pull, let's just say. This particular charger could deliver a maximum of 350, uh, but it's only delivering what the vehicle requires. Now all of a sudden another EV driver pulls into the charging station and plugs in at charger B on the balanced, on the balanced cabinet. The Electrify America Power Cabinet recognizes that the EV at Charger B that can handle, let's say, 280. Let's say it's a Taycan, right? I don't know. Can they do 280? I think they could do Let's say it's a Lucid that I know can take 280, okay? So the Power Cabinet, what it will do is it'll balance out the energy being dispensed between these two charging ports. In this example, the vehicle at Charger A will receive 150 kilowatts, and the vehicle at Charger B would receive 200 kilowatts, until the vehicle at charger A starts to taper and it's starting to request less than 150. At that point, um, the remaining power will then be ramped up and go to, go, to, uh, go to the second car. So the balancing the power between the two chargers, uh, charger ports, it all happens dynamically and automatically. That's pretty cool. I like that. And, um, and again, the thing to remember is, is that, um, you know, Initially, when I read this, I was talking to Kyle earlier, and I said, yeah, but Kyle, if I, if I have a 350, selfishly, all to myself, and I'm, I'm in a Lucid, let's just say, um, I know that I can pull 280, let's say. My car can pull up to 300. Um, so if somebody pulls in, I'm going to be like, ah, oh, I'm bummed out because now I'm going to be ramped down, and let's say he can pull 150, I'm going to get 200. So I'm going to go from 280, 290 down to 200. But... You know what? For the benefit of the masses, I see why this makes a lot of sense to do this. And, and I think it's going to absolutely help um, speed the evolution of, of getting more and more charging stations out there. So these balanced, um, you know, like I mentioned before, these balanced cabinets, um, they're going to be they're going to be labeled as such on, on the stickers and all of that. And, uh, you know, look, as they continue to roll out the next generation chargers, all the new stations will feature this balanced charging functionality and keeping up with the demands of, um, you know, of, the, of, um, of, of EVs, right? So I think that's a good thing. That's, that's kind of it, you know, stickers and balancing. It's just to summarize itself. But, you know, I did want to take just a couple of minutes to talk about um, something that EA had introduced earlier this year. I think it was March. Uh, they did a big press release and uh, and, and they introduced the charging station in the future. Now, for those of you that watch uh, Out of Spec Reviews and have been, you know, sort of checking out Kyle's travels over in Europe, some of the charging stations over there are just insane. It's like, you know, you want to go out there and hang out. You don't want your car to finish charging. They got restaurants in them. They got bars in them. They got office spaces in them. Um, heck, I think there was even one that had a pool, although I think when Kyle showed up, the pool was shut down in Germany. Um, so... You know, kind of an interesting thing. You compare that to perhaps, uh, no disrespect to EA, but the back of a Walmart at one in the morning, you know, it's kind of a, a kind of a big difference. But I think what, what EA is doing is, is, is they're evolving, right? And, and we understand that. So earlier this year, like I mentioned, they introduced this concept of the charging station in the future. Um, they're going to have lots of innovations. Some of the options will include customer lounges with waiting areas. And we've seen some of this with Tesla. I think out west, I've not seen some of the big stations, but some of the installs that, that we've seen are, are, are pretty impressive that Tesla's put out. And there's no doubt, all, all EA has to do is just replicate what they're seeing from some of the competition that's out there. Um, you know, waiting areas, other customer-focused services, EV showcase areas, dedicated event spaces to enhance the human experience. Um, they could be located at select charging or shopping centers and may offer even valet charging or curbside delivery. Um, they're also going to be offering some of these new, new stations with solar canopies, up to 500 individual chargers at 100 charging stations across the country. So, you know, this is a major step forward, in my opinion. Um, you know, in addition to providing shelter from the sun and the weather, uh, the energy captured by the solar, right? They'll put that into the grid so that, that they can use that to charge the cars. They're in process of deploying more than 150 on-site battery energy systems that will store power when elect electricity costs are lower and supplement util you, you know, that utility power during high points of consumption. 
I don't know if you saw recent, they're, they're, the, the heat wave that's going on in Cali right now. They're saying, you know, put your thermostat up to 78 or, you know, don't charge your electric car. I even heard that. I don't know if that's true. But, you know, we, we, we've got, you know, these are creative ideas to be able to use battery storage and enhance the, enhance the charging experience, um, you know, and, and also that could also help, you know, EA uh, consume electricity at lower rates and then provide more consistent pricing. So in addition to these new stations, these new places where these chargers are going to be going, EA is also going to be rolling out new chargers themselves, as I mentioned before, with up to 150 kilowatts and 350 kilowatts of charging power. And uh, the good news is they're going to keep that iconic green glow, you know, so when you're, you're cruising down at night and you're not sure where the, where the EA station is, there it is, the glow of green, it's there it is. And these suckers are going to be eight feet tall, these new units. I think some, you know, people have seen them out west. I know Kyle's seen them already. But uh, I think that's, that's really good. They're going to have a brighter human-machine interface, an HMI. I don't know. I call that a UI. But a better screen, a brighter screen. How many times have you sat there and in the sun you're trying to read that screen and you just can't read it? But, you know, to help to reduce the glare from the sunlight, it's just make it easier for to read the operational instructions that are on there. Um, there's going to be a single connector cable with an all-new cable management system to ease the effort to plug in no matter where the charging port is. I mean, some of these charging ports, I know when I was taking Kyle's Rivian out, it's on the side of the car. I think it's the same thing on the F-150. Maybe I'm wrong. But, you know, some of these charging ports, they're they're starting to, manufacturers are putting them in, in creative places. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting. And then I guess a reduced footprint of both the charger and the power cabinets should allow easier installation and also more equipment, more dense in space constrained, constrained urban environments. Um, so look, the goal of Electrify America and Electrify Canada's custom, customer centric mission is to continuously enhance and elevate the charging experience for today's EV drivers and ease the learn, learning curve for the next generation of, of drivers in the years to come. And a key focus of this initiative has been to alleviate available charger power and charging speed confusion. And, uh, you know, I think that we are all, we're all challenged learning. I learn something every day. I like to teach something every day too. And I think um, I give hats off to EA with this press release. I think what they're doing is good. I think, like I mentioned before, it's a step in the right direction. We still have a lot to do. The network needs to grow. It needs to get bigger. Um, and, and the reliability needs to increase. But I will tell you this. They're aware of it. And this press release that I shared with you today, I think, confirms that they're listening to us. So here in the YouTube world, we make a difference. They're listening to us. So I'm, I'm pleased. And I just want to thank uh, Kyle for giving me this opportunity to share this press release with all of you. And thanks again for watching another episode of Out of Spec Dave, and I'll catch you on the next one. Have a good day.